Heidi Fang for MMA Fight Corner with Michael Chiesa. First uh, time back in the Octagon since Ultimate Fighter eight months ago. What was it like to shake the rust off and get back in there? You know, it felt great. Uh, this was my first real UFC card breaking out from under the Ultimate Fighter banner. Um, and it's a historic one at that. So I, it's truly a blessing to be here and have things go the way that I'd want it to. Going out and getting a win, you know, wasn't the prettiest, but uh, that's just kind of my penchant. You know, I just go out there and have an ugly fight and find a way to win. But I feel great. Uh, it's great to be here, and I'm glad things went my way. You're stacking up those rear naked choke victories and also the first round wins. How does it feel to have another um, rear naked choke victory here in the UFC where it's probably the toughest league to finish anyone? You know, it feels really good. The thing is, uh, you know, a lot of fighters have an X factor. Sam Cecilia has his right hand. Cody McKenzie has his McKenzie team. And, uh, you know, my X factor is uh, just taking the back and looking for that rear naked choke. You know, I got other tricks from there that I haven't had to resort to yet. But uh, that's just kind of my go-to thing. You know, if I get a guy's back, I'm really uh, very aggressive with securing that submission. Um, you know, I'm just, that's kind of my plan A. You know, my plan A is if I get your back, I'm going to find a way to choke you. So I'm just glad that... Uh, I was able to let things go my way in a very traditional fashion. As we saw your whole life pretty much unveiled in the Ultimate Fighter, we also saw that Sam Cecilia was like one of your very close confidants, friends, training partners. Are you still working out together in training um, as far as uh, everything goes now? Sam Cecilia was in my corner tonight. Yeah. Um, Sam's like my big brother. Uh, you know, he's just a, like a year and a half older than me. And, you know, we've been training together every day for the last five years. We've got each other here. I mean, back in Spokane, we don't have this big gym with all these coaches and big camp or nothing like that. It's pretty much been me and him and our coach, Rick Little, and my boxing coach, Mike Howe, that, you know, we just kind of build each other up, a real small, tight-knit team. But I feel like that uh, that's a good thing. You know, there's not a bunch of guys in one camp. We don't have the Greg Jackson thing going on. No disrespect to them, but I feel like our little, small, tight-knit team um, has proven to be pretty successful. That absolutely has. You're not, um, you know, there's like varying records depending on where you look. Is it eight down in a row? Uh, nine, nine and oh. Nine and oh, okay. I was looking on different sites and some say seven, some say eight. So I was like, I just wanted to know for sure what it was. Nine and oh. Uh, yeah, some of my pro fights, have, I'm pretty sure one of them was in like a barn once. So, I mean, <laughs> it's not going to show up on every website. I mean, the Northwest doesn't always have the premier <laughs> pro shows. I mean, sometimes I'm having to, kick some straw out of my way while I'm warming up, but uh, fight's a fight, man. They're all the same. I had heard that prior to this fight that you actually had uh, a case of shingles, and that's what had kept you out of the Fox card? Yeah, uh, I came down with shingles and a staph infection uh, just a week just a week before the fight. I, I didn't really think it was that bad. I was like, oh, I'm going to push through this. I'll take my medicine and be fine. Called the UFC, and they called me back, and they're like, dude, we can't let you fight. Like, You're going to start cutting weight, and you're going to be a disaster. And really, there's really no chance that you winning with just how you're going to feel adding the medicine and the sickness into the equation. So, you know, it was unfortunate that I had to get bumped off the card. I also had a knee surgery. Uh, I had, six weeks ago, I had my uh, medial meniscus scoped in, in my right knee. I had hurt it uh, back in, I think, like August. So, I mean, just this, this, this time away has not been the easiest time. You know, not only was it hard for me to not compete when I'm used to fighting so often, having the knee surgery, getting sick. It's been a hoo hoo. Yeah, it's been a it's been a windy road, but and that one was supposed to be in Seattle. Exactly, and that that's what was really hard is I had a lot of friends and family there. It just wasn't my time, you know. I have to trust that everything happens for a reason. I'm a very faithful person. I have a strong faith in God, and I feel like that, you know, it just wasn't my time, and I was meant to be here, and I can see why. I went out and got to get a win on a, a historic card, so I, I endured my hardships, and look where it led me. Now that you do have that, where do you see yourself stacking up in the lightweight division? What do you foresee as being next for yourself? I want to keep moving up. Uh, I want to be a world champion. I, I can't. I can't help but be vocal about it. Uh, I feel like n there's not. There's a lot of guys in this sport that are here just for the job. I'm here for the challenge. Uh, I want to keep testing myself every time. You know, people continue to doubt me, and I know it's because I'm not the cleanest, prettiest fighter. I'm not out knocking dudes' heads off or whatever. But I'm still winning. I'm here to challenge myself, and I'm going to keep doing it until I get myself a world title. And I, I'm going to go 3-0 this year. Last thing, just kind of fun. I've been looking on Twitter, and a lot of people are talking about the beard and how maybe Johnny Hendricks should have some beard envy. How long is it taking you to get this, uh, I guess, quaff actually perfected to the way you like it? Uh, it's been a couple months. It's just a tradition I've always started. And, you know, when I started to grow facial hair, I got sick of shaving all the time. And I was like, screw it. When I have a fight camp, 
I'm just going to let it grow, and then I'll shave it when the fight's over. Okay. I never thought that I would be able to grow this kind of beard. Uh, definitely, yeah, my dad could grow facial hair, but not like this. So I got it from my grandpa. You know, and I love it. It's kind of like a trademark thing. I enjoy having a beard. It's fun. You know, you do get a lot of weird comments about it, but uh, it's just it's just kind of who I am. Defines the maverick. Defines the maverick. Defines the Northwest, boys. Uh, people see me and Sam together all the time. I mean, we're hanging out all the time, and people are always like, hey, is that your brother? So we both, we're both we both Italian guys, big beards, busted up faces, and you guys are brothers. We're like, might as well be. I mean, we're probably cousins in some weird way, so... <laughs> Going back to the old country. So this was eight months in the making then? This was eight months in the making and uh, it unfolded just the way I wanted it to. I can't express how happy I am to be here and get a win on this card. Now I'm just excited to go watch my boss, the chief, Uriah Faber, go out there and get a win tonight. Well, I don't want to keep you much longer because I know you already missed a TKO there by Robbie Lawler over Koss. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to spoil it, but I think you kind of saw it. <laughs> so. I, mean, I was looking through the lens. I was like doing an interview and I kept looking at the lens. I'm like trying to move my head in a weird way so I could see the fight. That's okay, though. I, I can watch on replay. Yeah, no doubt. So best of luck to you, Michael, and thank you so much for your time.